Hello YouTube, this is Todd here and I'm here with the first video talking about a Python chat server that we are going to create. And before I go into source code, I'm going to talk about sockets. Um, sockets allow two computers to communicate. So in a way, think about it as like, we have guy A right here, we have guy B right here, and we'll assume that the area between is like a cliff. But these guys want to be able to communicate, like maybe bring stuff over. So what they do is they decide to throw a rope and it allows them to communicate. That's kind of like sockets. Sockets allow two computers to communicate, connect them, or more proper term would be network them. So this is network programming. The chat server that I'm going to be going over really quick in this video will not really going over really quick. Um, what we're going to start out with is we're going to have a small little chat server and it's going to be built for two people. We're going to have the server and server node which is can also be a client node. So the server ultimately is the main part that accepts and disperses messages but the server can also act as a client as in participating in the conversation and then we are going to have a client who's just going to be conversating with whoever is on the server client node. A node is just a fancy word for a computer. So I've already written the two source codes and I'm just gonna open them up and quickly, not quickly, but go over them. So I just called this chat.py probably should have called it like server.py so this is going to be the server slash client node as you can see we have imported our library socket you may also instead of doing just import socket you could also do from socket import or you could do from socket import I'll do socket Bind, listen, receive, and send. But it's just a whole lot easier to import it one of these two ways up top. So we're going to have the variable host. The variable host I left blank because it's going to be uh, basically it's going to be the local host or this machine on the local area network. Let's say on. Uh, my local area network my IP is 192.168.1.1 if somebody else is on if the client was on my local network they would connect to the host 192.168.11 next we have the port Computer has a computer has like 65,353 or 65,535. It's one of those two numbers of ports. Um, the port is just the place of a computer where information goes in and out. For this, I just decided to use port 8000. Um, generally, whenever you're making your own programs, you want to use four digit ports because they're not dedicated. Like if I ran this on my machine now on port 80, it wouldn't allow me to do so because it's like a restricted port. So now we're going to set up the socket. So I have the variable s and it's going to equal, I don't know why I did that at all. Make things simpler. Variable s is going to equal socket. And you can also take out this code right here. I have no clue to be honest why I did that that's just extra code that we don't need this af underscore inet in sock stream is just kinda like define the rules of the socket um, the good thing about using af inet <coughs> and sock stream is uh, it's very versatile probably 98% uh, of all socket programming will use these so we'll use if underscore inet and sock stream. Don't really have to worry about what they do yet, what exactly they are. You just need to know that those are the rules that define 
exactly how the socket's going to act and play. So now we are going to take S and use a dot separator, which means we are going to bind, which bind means basically, uh, okay, this is what we're going to use, and we're going to give it host, which is going to be local host, or in the case of looking at our local area network, 192.168.1.1 as an example. And then we're also going to give it port. If you notice, there are double parentheses because bind usually takes one argument. But because we have to give it two arguments, if you do the double parentheses, it sees that as one argument. So what this what this means right here is once again we have the S with the what's called the dot separator right there. That's going to be using the rules of AFI net and sock stream and it's going to listen and take the argument of one. What listen simply means is uh, how many connections it can receive at one time. Since this is only built for two people we only need it to receive one connection right now. As we go further we're going to need it to accept more connections. This uh, con and address equals accept, which means this is gonna. This actually says accept the connection, and then we are gonna print print the address of the person connected. So. What's going to happen is whenever it receives a connection, it receives two pieces of data. The first piece is going to get stored in CON, and the second one is going to be stored in ADDD in ADDR. ADDR is just short for address, which is actually going to be like their IP. Now we're going to set a loop, or we're going to we're going to set i equal to true, the variable i equal to true, and then we're going to do a while loop. While i is true, we are going to continually run this segment of code. So, what's going to happen whenever I fired up both of these programs? I did show a little preview of this program, so if you haven't seen that, you might want to go watch it because that's going to help understand this. After the user connects, the user is prompted to send a message. So, what this says is we're going to have a variable data, and we're going to set it equal to whatever the connection receives, and it can receive 1,024 1, bytes of data. This is how many bytes of data. And this just means it's going to receive using this connection that we set here in the accept, and whatever it receives we're going to store in data. And then we're going to print received so that way the person knows that the data was received and then we're going to actually print data by using repr -E data and we actually don't need this line of code that was another mistake of mine now we're going to allow whoever's on the server slash client node and this is what makes it the, a client too is this right here the reply so what we're going to do is we're going to have variable reply and we're going to set it equal to a raw input which means the user can enter in data and it's going to ask it's going to give us uh, the user reply and a colon so that way they know to reply and it's going to use the connection and it's going to send all reply so go back here and comment this code receives data 1024 bytes using con and store into data print data 
And something else I should have also probably said is data is the message the user types. And then we are going to simply here send all. Now, I'm going to quickly talk about send all. There are two commands that send data. You have send, and then you have send all. Send all is important for the server because that means it's going to send to every node connected. If we just use the send command, it's just going to send to one specific node. And this right here, this ending is kind of useless because I will always equal true because we set it equal to true. So this is kind of useless right now, but a little bit later on, it'll become useful. It's not part of this loop right here, and we don't want it to be because if we put it in this loop, that means it would close the connection, and then we would just keep on getting errors every single time it try to ran this code of segment because there would no longer be a connection. But simply, this just closes out the connection. So this is the server slash client side of our program. In the next video, I will be going over the client part specifically. I also plan to take the source code and put it, I'm going to try and put it in the YouTube description. If it messes up the formatting, I'll probably just leave it out but let's go ahead and run this just to make sure it works python chat.py I know what I gotta do see what I mean by I mean, in one of the videos I talked about, sometimes it's just specific on how you import things. I had it imported this way. It didn't quite like it. It would have worked if I would have kept that socket dot, but that's a whole lot more typing than is necessary. So if you import it this way, it saves you from all that extra typing. So it works. We just don't have a client to connect to it. So it's kind of hard to show you everything that goes along with it, but it runs, so we know it works. So in my next video, I'm just going to be going over the client portion.